Hi everyone, I'm Nancy Jacobs, the Basket Master, coming to you from beautiful New Mexico, where today it's about 65 degrees outside, so it's nice out. Uh, last week we made our base, our rectangular base, and we measured it, we got it all centered up. Now we need to make sure that it stays centered, it stays in place, nothing shifts out, out of whack. And the way to do that is to twine a keeper row. So to twine it, what I'm going to do here first is let's let's lower the camera. Okay, so I have my base. I have my round reed. Now I've take I'm using number three round reed. You could use number two or maybe even number one, but I have number three on hand, and that's what I like, so that's what I'm going to use. Uh, I have a piece of round reed that's long enough to go around my base, oh, a little more than twice. And what I want to do is I'm going to find the center of it, fold it in half, and I'm going to crimp it with my needle nose pliers. And when I crimp it really good and tight with my needle nose pliers, that's going to help ensure that this reed is not going to break when I bend it. It's not going to snap in half. Now I'm going to take it and loop it over one of my stakes. My personal preference is I do not like to start my twining on a corner. Um, I guess I think it can be difficult to finish off if it's on a corner. So I'm just choosing the middle stake here. Now I'm right handed so I twine from left to right. What I, Both pieces of twining are on the above my basket base and my basket base is rough side up okay so both pieces of twining are up here I take the piece of twining that's on my left it goes behind the stake to the right now that just switched it so now this piece is on the left this piece of twining is on the left it goes behind the stake on the right again both pieces of twining stay above your basket base uh, sometimes uh, students will get their twining below the basket base and uh, then just can have some difficulty. The other thing is, take note, look how nice and tight. I'm bringing that twining right into my weaving, so it's, it's good and tight, and that's what you really, really want. Okay, my twining that's on the left goes behind the stake on the right. Once I get it to the corner, wrap that bottom piece around good and tight. Now the twining on the left goes behind the stake to the right. And again, make get those corners good, good and tight in there. What I like to do when I get to a corner is I like to rotate my base 90 degrees so that I continue working left to right. Okay, the twining on the left goes behind the stake on the right. Again, always keep your twining above your basket base and continue again make sure you keep that twining good and tight against your weaving again we're at the corner here bring that around bring that bottom one around now the top one the top piece goes behind the stake to the right I turn I turn my basket base 90 degrees Okay, the twining that's more on the left goes behind the stake on the right. Twining on the left, behind the stake on the right. And continue. It makes a little half twist. I'll hold it up closer to the camera here as soon as I get to the end. Here we are at the corner. The twining on the left goes behind the stake on the right. And that stake has, has gotten out of place. I can see it. It's not squared up. That's why we need these good keeper rows. Bring that bottom one around, around good and tight. The 20 on the left goes behind, stick to the right of it. Continue so that you make a little half twist between every stake. We're almost around our basket base. Once you get to the end, you can take an 
awl or a small flat blade screwdriver or your basket weaving packing tool and tuck it under where you started and that will help to hide the ends. I think I can just lift these up with my fingernails and just slip them. Just slip them under. If you want to slip it completely under the reed and hide it under the reed, that is just fine. I'm going to just slip it right right there. Now, my ends, they're kind of long, but you know what? That's okay. Let your finish up your basket, let your basket dry well, and then you can come back and clip these ends really nice and short. But let your basket dry well overnight um, so that the ends don't, don't pop out of place. Now take a look here. Take, let's see if I can get this up nice to the camera. Okay, do you see? There's like a little half twist between each and each and every stake there. See that? That is the look that you want. That is twining. And you will use twining a lot in your basket weaving. It's a um, skill that sometimes sometimes it takes a little bit to catch on to but that's okay but you will use it a lot so be sure to practice it and master it and uh, you'll be glad you did happy weaving i'm going to lift the camera up here and i just want to say i hope everyone has a really happy easter coming up on sunday and if you found me on youtube be sure to visit my blog leave a nice comment here's my blog www.basketmasterweavings.blogspot.com and i've got a lot of good basket weaving tips and techniques there for you a lot of basket pictures that i've woven so uh, come and visit me and happy easter everybody and we'll see you soon take care bye bye